Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is Sonia Miller here of Junk Monkey Paint Company. And today on our channel, we are going to DIY together, okay? So if you've been following me over on our Facebook page, you know that this week I just came back from the beach. Last night's vlog was all about our travels to the East Coast beaches. It was amazing. I'm feeling totally inspired this week to do all things ocean themed. And so tonight's project we're gonna pick up here on our YouTube channel and we're gonna work together. So this is an old cabinet door. If you look at the vlog on here on our channel where we um, painted a hutch where I went ahead and put on that beautiful berry dance and did the black wax. It was gorgeous, but I did not put the doors back on. So we're going to make use of this door because I am a girl who loves to reuse, relove, repurpose. And so anyway, let's make it beautiful together. So I'm going to go ahead. You can see I have a bunch of different colors here. This is all my junk monkey chalky style paint that I have here. And what I'm going to do right now to start off with is do an ombre effect over this area right here. Kitchen cabinet doors or any cabinet doors for that matter are amazing to be able to create signs because they are just like the perfect size, right? And you don't have to cut anything and you have the inlays. So if you ever find doors that have beautiful inlays and things like that, you see them on the side of the road, make sure you grab them. For this particular effect, I'm just going to basically start to think about the colors like as they sort of like darken, okay? So I'm going to use the paintbrush tonight that's a little bit smaller in my stash for this particular effect. I'll link them below if you two want to get an entire set of these. Uh, that I recommend for when you're painting signs and you're sort of looking for something that feels good and picks up paint really well. So I've got my my Don't Make Me a Blush, one of our newest colors. And what I'm going to do is take my brush and I want my stripes, my ombre, to be just the width of this brush pretty much, right? So sometimes you see me use shabby chip brushes, but for this particular effect, I don't want the stripes to be huge. So I'm gonna go with a smaller brush. And this is really nice because it's nice and thick and picks up um, picks up paint really, really well, right? All right, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and put my brush in to my, uh, whoo, Mr. Ant, like seriously, buddy, seriously. Um, I'm going to go ahead. What I'm going to do is carry the same brush. Yes, if I had a paper plate, I could put all the colors out on them. Listen, when you get to uh, have your own paints, you get to do whatever the heck you want. So I don't judge if you stick your paintbrush back into another color. You know, it's whatever you want to do. But in my case, I want to create the ombre effect. So I've got the pink. Now I've got the sweet sunset. and It's carrying over just a little bit. And I am loving it. All right. So let me go ahead and pick a different color here. So let's go with a brighter color. Let's see here. Let's go with a little bit of our crazy eyes. I'm going to dip just a little bit into my crazy eyes on the edge of that sweet sunset to give me like a fade, right? I'm totally thinking sunset right now. What about you guys? It's so nice to be out here listening to the birds, doing some painting outside tonight. It's awesome. Let's put a little bit more on there. Definitely thinking some yellows when it comes to the beach. So let's go ahead and add some yellow in right there. We gotta catch it before our, before our crazy eyes sets up because we don't want it to dry. Chalky style paint, especially our brand, dries quickly. That's the way I like it. And uh, so out here in the sunshine, in the heat, we have been having like a heat wave here in the Pittsburgh area. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I honestly, I'd say um, it's, it's like 90s today. It is so hot. All right, there we go. Look how beautiful that looks already, guys. You see the colors coming through? All right, got a little bit of yellow. Okay, let me think what else makes me think beachy. How about some? of our Misty Aqua. I'm gonna dip a little bit of the Misty Aqua in here. Or my brush into the Misty Aqua. Pull a little bit of that color. Look how nice that is. All right, and then from there, let's do a little bit of our stormy forest. This is like a blue green and I think it's a pretty cool color. Definitely reminds me of the water. 
Guys, isn't that beautiful? Like seriously, if you just look at this, it kind of reminds me of a sunset the way we've got going down here. Imagine the waves crashing out here, the beautiful, beautiful, the beautiful um, sea right here. And imagine if you put a little bit of brown, we could totally have a sunset scene right there. So let me go ahead and pick another color that I want to use here. I think I'm going to use maybe our blue. This is our Liberty Blue. And I think I'm going to use this color for the outside. I'm going to dip my brush in there. What this reminds me of, this design that I'm doing tonight, it reminds me um, of like the beach blankets. I know we bought several of them this weekend when we were at the beach over at Ocean City on the boardwalk. And uh, it just, you know how you get all the colors when you think about the beach? Like this is what this totally reminds me of, one of those beach blankets. So we're going to go ahead and use this darker blue to be our outside edge. on over the white. The fact that it was painted white, I can use that to my advantage and do a little distressing and bring some of these colors back to show some of that white. So I can play that up if I want. This belonged to somebody who started the process of flipping a hutch and um, she had used a white paint of some sort onto her doors and she got the bottom half of the hutch done and that is as far as it got, I took the hutch off her hands. She told me her husband was like, we're gonna burn it if you don't do something with it. So I'm so happy she called me. And uh, so we made that beautiful. So we're gonna just play it up. And even though a portion of it was painted white, that's okay. It works for what we have going down, right? Guys, isn't this nice? Like, look how cool that looks. I just love, love, love this look. Totally beach inspired, right? All right, so let's, let me just go ahead and just do some edging to make sure we got it all up on it there. And it's all the blue meets where the color is and the edges. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay. All right, so it's drying. The first color I put on is already pretty much dry. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and put our covers, of course, on our paint. That's important. And let's pick a stencil that we want to use. I'll show you the two that I really were thinking about. So I've got a few here that I was thinking about, really, really thinking hard uh, today about using these beautiful seahorses. I love them. I love them. I love them. I love all the detail on them. And I'm totally thinking that I could use like, this looks like mama and baby, right? Put the mama up here, put the baby down here. And we could keep it in this direction, like and make it tall because the seahorse is tall. So we're gonna need something that, you know what I mean, that like, you know, spans the width. I also got this guy here, I gotta tell you. I'm thinking that Mr. Lobster could also be a pretty cool thing too. What do you guys think? Mr. Lobster? And I also like the sea turtle. Also like the sea turtle. There's a sea turtle here. The only thing is, his arms are bigger than this centerpiece. So ideally, if I can keep something that's gonna fit within the focal point of this, I'm probably gonna like it a whole lot more. Look at this, this is a cool, this is this would look really nice on here, but do you see what's happening? The anchors are just a little bit big. They're gonna fall into the dips, into the dips. And so, for that reason, I don't think I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. Got a sand dollar here, which would be so cool. A whale and a crab. Mm -hmm. Oh, this could be cool. It actually says, it says, whoo, it says, ahoy. Let me see if that will actually work. I kind of like that too. Could totally make that one work. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. So all we have to do is just punch out in this cardboard stencil all the parts that make it up.
Okay, so we've got the Ahoy. All right, this little piece right here, I punched up by accident. You see what's gonna happen? So I'm gonna go ahead when I'm done here and put a little bit of tape to make sure he stays on there. So if I wanna reuse the stencil again, which I will, I will definitely wanna do that. So now let's go ahead and center our Ahoy. All right, let's go ahead and grab our black velvet. I'm gonna dip my same brush back into my black velvet. And I'm gonna make it work with maybe some black. Let me just take a little bit off my brush first because you guys know that I like to offload when I stencil because we don't need to, we do not need to um, have bleed through, right? This is what we're trying to avoid. So I'm gonna go ahead and not trying to get a t whole ton of like, I don't want these to look perfect because I want these to look beachy and distressed, right? And so we don't want the letters to be perfect. I want them to look like they're kind of faded and distressed. Better keep my finger on that O center. So he doesn't fling. Let me create a whole new letter of the alphabet. That's cool right there. Here we go, guys. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I like it. Let this dry a little bit more. There were some parts that was just a little bit tacky, but that's okay. It actually lifted a few parts of the color when I peeled it back. We're out here. I did not plug in my heat gun, so I just let it air dry. Didn't really care if there was a few parts that were a little bit, um, still a little bit damp, because at the end of the day, I was going for an imperfectly perfect all over, make it work, no biggie. Okay, I gave it a few minutes. I'm just gonna do a little bit of distressing around the edges. There we go. I'm also gonna do some distressing on our stencil portion. Maybe what I'll do is go ahead and play the black off of here and create around the edge a little bit of extra distressing and add some black in that way. a little bit of white as well because that this piece is missing some white especially since it's beachy let's keep it on the light and fun side Let's let this beauty dry and we will finish it off. Get my monkey shine ready and my brush and my buffing rag. All right, I'm gonna use my monkey shine and put it onto my wax brush. You'll find these tools onto our website at junkmonkeypaint.com. This is a beautiful all natural beeswax polish finish that works to seal your piece.
All right, once we have the wax on and buffed in terms of putting it into the pores of the paint to really seal it off and fill all the pores that are left behind from the paint from the wood, now we go ahead and we take a buffing cloth and we can go ahead and take off the top excess of wax that's left behind so your piece is left feeling so nice and smooth. And what will happen is the all natural, non toxic wax polish will absorb down into your wood because wood is really like a sponge. It's completely porous, it sucks things in. So it's going to suck that in just like a rich, luscious lip balm for your lips. So we gave it a big old drink of cool water, especially on a hot kind of summer's day. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me tonight uh, here on our channel. Lots more DIYs coming up. You never know what we're going to do. Always on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we do our vlog uploads. So hopefully you got lots of inspiration. Be sure to send me pictures. Make sure you put them over in our Junk Monkey Paint Projects page on Facebook so you can show off what you've been up to. Bye, friends.